Hey guys, welcome to another episode. Sorry I wasn't able to make it yesterday. I had some computer issues. Um, but let's see what we can find out today. The stock. Um, we had some great earnings yesterday. Some stock prices have been moving a bit. Um, but let's see what we can find a look. If anybody wants to take a look at any stock in specific, feel free um, to let me know as well. So let me just make sure I am open real quick. Yep, I should be good. So good morning, good morning. Is anybody out there right now? Or my solo dolo for the moment. Um, but yeah, yesterday we had AMD earnings. We had Microsoft, Pinterest, and Google, right? AMD and Google definitely did some great numbers. Uh, I think Pinterest did. What's going on, David Becker? I, I also think Pinterest did pretty good, right? That's the video I'm actually working on right now. Um, Pinterest and Spotify both did some, in my opinion, some great numbers, um, and the stock price have taken a beating. Um, so that video should be out later today. We'll probably have to do a Microsoft and Google video later on as well. Um, and today Shopify has done some great numbers. So I might just throw them all three in one, in one video, but is there any earnings you guys are, are super interested to, to keep an eye on right now? Um, I mean, after close, obviously, we have Apple, we have Facebook, we have Qualcomm, Ford, Teladoc. Uh, all these five, are, I, wanna f I feel like people have been pretty, pretty interested in. Um, what's going on, Mr. Bear? How are you guys doing with earnings? Are e earnings treating you right? Yeah, that is true, right? The, there is the FMOS, FOMC meeting tonight, and we do have a Biden addressing Congress tonight. So I do think that's a, a huge reason, um, like the stock market has been kind of quiet still, even though, so two reasons, mainly the earnings week and also the form of, of meetings we have later today. Uh, so, um, right, I think futures, how are futures doing? I haven't really taken a look at them. Then this... Man, Crocs, <laughs> someone was on the Discord channel talking about them, David. I, I honestly can't see it. But yeah, right, futures are still pretty flat, even though earnings, right? We had a mixed earnings. If we take a look at, at stocks making the biggest moves, right? We have Alphabet up big. Um, is Google stock still up right now? What are some of the, um, Mr. Barry, some of your earnings you're looking for? See, Google is up 4.5, 4.7%. That was me that bought low. Interesting in seeing skills. Yeah, May 4th is a lot of, uh, I, I feel May 4th, I have a few stocks that I want to keep an eye out. Skills is going to be one of them, Mr. Bear. Another one, I, I don't have it in my portfolio right now, Activision. Activision, I think, does on May 4th. And I'm kind of curious of how, how things are doing. Palantir, May 11th, before open. Nice, yeah. Palantir is one, again, I don't have, but I don't mind following. Um, is AMD, has AMD pulled back a bit, or is it still, it's still nice, up 4.4%. Um, anybody here was on AMD? I, I it, It's crazy. I mean, it, they were super, I, I think their earnings were great. Really, really great. It's crazy the amount of movement or the overall change of this company when I first invested in it. And let's see, Microsoft. Shanaz, what's going on? Is Visa at a high valuation? Um, to be honest, I'm not sure. Let's take a look at Visa real quick. I mean, this is one of those stocks that is, right, it doesn't matter. It's just been pulling up, right? I think looking for high, hmm, actually, let's take a look. Let's see what we can look at. Let's go to Y charts. Let's put in Visa. Let's take a look at it via um, price to sales ratio forward one year. Let's also take a look at PE ratio. I don't know if they are, um, if they are profitable. And let's also take a look at EBITDA. EBITDA. 
forward? There should be a forward beta. Give me one second. I wanna EV to a beta forward. All right, so I don't need price. Um, then let me just make this large. I just want to take a look at, at this so panel per financial metric. Um, so here, right? I mean, if we just good morning, electric soldier, how's it going? Right? Um, Shanaz, I just wanted to take a look at Visa on valuation and how it has been on the past, right? But if we take a look at forward price to sales ratio, right now it's sitting at like 17.92. If we're looking at that ratio, right, it, it, it seems to be kind of like where it was on average between july between i want to say late march to like october we can see it was around that 17s 19s um but compared to how it's been in the past six months it is a bit higher uh if we take a look at pe ratio forward same story right pe ratio forward it's a bit higher than normal um and ev to a beta forward it's a lot higher than normal so Shanaz, this doesn't mean the company is high valuation, but based on historical valuation numbers in the past year, it's a bit higher than it's normally been. Um, that doesn't mean there it's not going to continue to run up, um, but it is it, historically it is a bit higher in valuation compared to compared to where it was. Um, and let's just take I want to take a look at Visa real quick. But again, right, this is a company that does great in both type of economies, right? So now it's one that is open and one that is closed. Uh, future growth, this company is expected to grow 13.8%. And I'm hoping I'm sharing my screen. I am sharing my screen, right, guys? 13.8% um, revenue growth. They are profitable. They are positive in cash flow from operations. And they have a very strong, like fi fundamentally because they are profitable and because they are um, positive in cash flow from operations, they are still also have a very strong balance sheet. It's not as leveraged as I thought it would have been. $18 billion in cash and $20.5 in debt. So overall, Visa looks great. Strong fundamental growth, um, strong, strong balance sheet. The only thing I would say is historically where the valuations are at right now, um, what price would I buy Visa in? Um, uh, that that would be a, a a crazy question. Let's say let me say this, Shanaz. If I wanted to get into Visa, this is how I would play it, Shanaz. If I wanted to get into Visa right now, even though it's a little bit higher valuation than normal, I would buy small positions here and there and just dollar cost average. Then if you, if I was to see a huge correction and see maybe like a a uh, eight ten percent drop then i would go a little bit heavier um but i don't think valuations like seeing things at a high valuation should kind of scare one off totally it should just scare off in how much you want to enter at first if you still want to get some exposure i personally even with high valuations if i want to get exposure i enter a little bit by little bit um and then when i see a huge drop that's when i get a little bit more aggressive uh one one perfect example was unity unity is a company i enjoy and since their IPO, I did mention that their valuation was crazy, crazy high. That did not stop me from buying Unity. I just bought little bit by little bit by little bit by little bit. But during this huge correction, that's when I really entered. It, it, I think before the correction, Unity was like 1% of my portfolio. And that's that I was adding over time. When we saw that correction, now Unity is about 7% of my portfolio. Um, so that's uh, that's how I enjoy doing things. It might be different from someone else because I, I think it's very difficult to try to guess a price to enter. And it's very difficult for, it's. I think it's chance for that price to ever come. Um, and you don't know when that price will come if it does. Um, so that, those are just my ideas, Shanaz. Um, and hopefully you find that helpful. Right. No, I didn't give you a price target, but like I said, I really don't look at price targets too much. And guys, let me know. I am sharing the screen, right? I can't open up my OBS real quick. I only have one screen. I had some computer issues. Um, uh, and that's why I wasn't able to stream yesterday. But also, yeah, um, David Becker, that's true, right? Another thing, set alerts. 
um, that's a great method. I think everybody has a different method that works for them. Um, and for me, I, I think dollar cost averaging is a good way, but then being aggressive when things pull down is also a good way. So uh, I feel like I, I, like I talked about it, I try to grab concepts from different investing styles and make one investing style that works better for me. For me, it's like dollar cost averaging throughout the way. When things are super gloom and down, that's the time to be a bit more aggressive. So what else is so Spotify, Spotify and Pinterest, right? Let me just take and if you guys want to take a look at any stocks opposed to what I'm looking at, feel free to just let me know on the comments. Um, I, I enjoy taking a look at anything. Um, so Spotify, Spotify, I can't believe it's down 8%. Um, they did have great numbers, in my opinion. Like I said, this is one I'm working on. Uh, I'm going to work on the video. Uh, I have all the information. Now I just have to record. Um, Spotify, Pinterest, is this still down? Pinterest down 11%. Uh, pretty, pretty, I, I think pretty exciting. Sitting at $68. That's kind of where this bottom, bottom on average were, around the high 60s. Uh, so it might be... I think Pinterest is also, I think right now the market might be giving us a few buying opportunities. Um, so I hope some we, we take them. What else do we have? Shopify did great numbers, right? Boeing, I haven't really, I don't follow Boeing much. Uh, General Dynamics, don't follow it much. Garmin, I know a lot of people are pretty interested in, in this company. I personally don't follow it. Hmm. Oh, Sony reported earnings. What are your thoughts on streaming services market long term? Who do you think will be the long term winner? Hmm. I mean, I I don't uh, electric sales. Are, I I feel like this long um streaming service market is what's going on, Johanan. Um, we what do you think of Corsair? We'll take a look at Corsair in a bit. Um. Let me answer this electro, uh, electric soldier's question. Um, so what I'm, I think streaming service market as a whole, the market as a whole is great, right? I do believe people are still going to continue to do cord cutting and just kind of do um, individual streaming services. I do believe there's going to be multiple long-term winners because now with all these services, right? Electric soldier, there's certain people, for example, me, I'm a huge Star Wars fan. So for me, I'm going to always have Disney+. Plus. I could really care less about like HT, HGTV and all these other channels. So I wouldn't go with that type of, of streaming services. There's someone else who completely might be the opposite. They could care less about Star Wars. They could care less about Disney and they worry more about HGTV um, and, and that type of reality TV shows. So I think there's going to be multiple winners and it's very, very difficult to determine in the streaming market which is going to be the better one obviously as a whole i think the advertisement whoever's working with the advertisement side is probably going to be the true true winner but in form of which content i i don't i don't think there's going to be just one made winner uh, i do think netflix will continue to keep its um its like kingdom i would say because netflix just has a lot of different markets and a lot of different content where all these other streaming services are just specified to one certain um one certain content creation type of group um so uh so i think yeah overall long term the advertisement market is the one that's going to be the true winner between the streaming services i think they're all going to be winners within their own space right because uh What's going on, Marcus? Should I buy Tesla or not, Marcus? That's a you question. I mean, I personally enjoy Tesla. I haven't looked at their earnings. One thing I did like about Tesla, though, was um, how how Musk mentioned that in the future, long-term investors are no longer going to see Tesla as just a car autonomous driving as just a car company or all in a software company. You're also going to see as a AI robotics company. And that got me super excited. Um, once I read that, I still haven't looked at their earnings, um, but that's pretty great as long term from now. I, I do believe the amount of data they probably have um, can be used in, in different concepts uh, and different technologies as well. So 
that I, I can see a strong future. Tesla is one that I personally is what how I just mentioned, um, similar to Visa, one that if I was to enter, I would buy in at small prices, uh, at small just dollar cost average. And if, if it ever sees a crazy, crazy pull up, and I really want to ingress, that's when I would be very aggressive. Um, so that's how I would play Tesla. So Johan, um, Johan, you want to take a look at Corsair. So let's take a look at Corsair. So I mean, Corsair, I think it is great for the streaming market, right? They, they have, um, do you see Roku with a lot of growth? First, let me, all right, um, before I keep going, uh, let me just answer Johan. Um, so first, let's take a look at Corsair. So Corsair right now, the stock price is sitting at $33.86 with a market cap of $3.1 billion. From its all-time highs, the stock is down 33.9%, almost 34%. This, uh, I, I like Corsair, right? Main reason I like Corsair as a streamer, I see a lot of their products here on my screen alone, on, on my desk. I have some of Elgato's products. I have some other key, I have a keyboard. I have a mouse, uh, lights that many streamers use, um, and, and they like to work with them. So I do believe the streaming side and the content creation side is going to continue to drive um, strong revenues for Corsair. Also the gaming side, right? Not only do they do stuff for streaming people, they also do for the gaming side. And that's one that's, I, I, I continue. Uh, like I say, I continue to believe it's going to grow. Um, let's take a look at numbers for Corsair. Uh, let's just uh, look at gaming. So quick look at their future growth company expected to grow its revenue 10 percent on average 9.6 right not a hyper growth stock um but it's not a slow grower either it is already profitable and it is positive in cash flow from operations so um so i i, I want to say that um right it, it, it's not a slow grower and it has strong fundamentals if we take a look at their financial health they are uh let's see let's see how they are they have about 100 they're a bit leveraged right they have a little bit more cash a little bit more debt than cash but remember this is a company that has inventory so i usually cut that in half um so in form of balance sheets they're okay not the best balance sheet not the worst balance sheet i'm okay with their balance sheet they have decent future growth and they have uh, uh they are profitable and they are positive in cash flow from operations corsair is opposed to like how i mentioned tesla and visa where this one has seen a nice pullback, right? So if I kind of wanted to enter Corsair, maybe not a big position, maybe a medium-sized position over time, and then dollar cost average uh, throughout the weeks. So Corsair looks pretty good at the moment. I don't have it though. Um, and no intention is on my side from adding yet, but I could see in like the next month or so, after I'm finished adding on my tier ones, I can come back to Corsair, maybe also come back to Activision. Um, Next, we have Enjudo. What's going on, Poncho? Pilot Poncho, interested to see how AMD platforms performs today. Agree. Your interpretation on Intel, NVIDIA, and AMD were spot on. Well done. Thank you, Pilot. Yeah, I was surprised. I mean, it, it, it pretty much moved on how, how I mentioned it in that previous video. How, how I said if AMD was going to do great on this, Intel would have taken a hit. Um, one thing, though. One thing that I do want to say is NVIDIA... Their earnings, let, let's let's see if I can make it two for um, two for two here on my semiconductors. AMD showed great numbers on cloud performance, on, on the data center performance. They really mentioned that they did really well in the CPU data center market. AMD, even though they are in the GPU market, they they very, very rarely, they very, very, they rarely take market share from NVIDIA in the data center cpu because we saw amd do great in data center cpu i believe nvidia is going to have a very very strong quarter in the data center gpu market um the only thing that has me a bit worried about nvidia is that it has kind of run up a lot in the past few months unlike amd where amd was kind of flat um, but i do believe nvidia is going to do a great earnings and i'm super super excited for them to to show up it makes me want to buy more nvidia right now actually but i can't i have no funds at the moment and nvidia is already a good portion of my portfolio
Um, so, uh, pi, uh, what's going on, Payne? So, um, CPUs, right? So, s there's two main, there's a lot of main components within the data center or just computers in general, right? So, the two main ones that AMD has is the CPU, and that's pretty much the processor that deals with a lot of, there's two major, so CPUs, I, I mean, I don't want to get too into it, but there's two major components of, uh, of a computer and a data center the cpu uh, amd has the amd ryzen and the gpu amd has the a um has the rtx not the rtx the radeon line intel mainly focuses on cpu pilot nvidia mainly focuses on gpu amd every time i see their earnings they are taking market share from intel in the cpu they always do great numbers in data centers I, bear, I rarely see them talking about the GPU market. And the GPU market is the one NVIDIA is mainly focused on. And even though normally if you see high performance in CPUs, you're going to most likely see high bar revenue in the GPU market. So because AMD this quarter showed us a high CPU market, I do believe NVIDIA is going to show us a high GPU market. Um, so yeah, I, I don't want to get too crazy into this. Um, but I do believe NVIDIA is going to do great numbers. So CPU central processing unit, GPU graphics processing unit. Both are used for data center. Um, both are used for different things. Um, G, um, GPUs are mainly used for like al algorithm type numbers, just mathematical equations, which is needed to really move the speed of things. Um, and stuff like that that's really good fundamentals by the puncher. yeah so yeah amd is one of the only ones is the only one right now really focusing on those two markets pilot poncho the cpu and the gpu nvidia um is mainly focusing on gpus but they most recently announced that they're also gonna enter the cpu market i don't know how long it's gonna take for them to to enter so for that reason i think intel is gonna be a quiet one for the next few years for the next few quarters maybe a year or two so Google's advertising revenue is very good this time. Then I expect apps, digital turbine albums will be very good. Very, very true. I, I think so too. Uh, and unfortunately, I, um, just because of, of, I can't respond with names, um, but I, I, I believe that will be true. But just because revenue is gonna be good doesn't mean that hasn't already been priced in. So that's something that I, I feel hurts a lot of investors just because earnings do well doesn't mean the stock price is going to do well. I do think an important thing to do is, um, is, is kind of take a look at how the stock has performed previously. For example, Microsoft, right? Microsoft is a perfect example. They did great earnings, right? Their earnings were amazing. They had strong revenue beat all across the maps. What they, what, but one thing is Microsoft has kind of really pulled up in the previous few months. So even though earnings were great, they were 2.5% not that great, right? So, so it seems small pullback. So that's why sometimes earnings do good, but the stock still pulls up because investors were expecting a little bit too much. Um, and let's see, I, I think I'm, what's going on in Judo? And Judo wants to take a look at AMKR. AMKR, let's see, at, let's take a look at that stock. Amcor Technology, this is a semiconductor. Okay, what do they do? I, I don't think I've... I don't think I've really followed them. So it, they pack, um, it's a semiconductor product packaging and test service provider. Hmm, this sounds interesting. A market cap of $5.1 billion. I can't believe I haven't really heard about this. I just want to see their quick products. Uh, so let's go to Amcor Technology. <laughs> Laminate for levels all right so hmm, i mean this is interesting for sure they do testing on for high speed mixed signal analog and high power and radio frequencies uh what else do they do so they do wafer probes they have burn-in testers, system-level testers. Okay, I want to know who some of their... Com com um, this is something I want to take a look at later on. Um, and Judo, this one seems pretty interesting. 
I would like to see who are some of their customers. Like, do they have some of the big chips creators? Um, what FPGA markets, what IC mar um, creators are using them um, to test their products? Um, so this is pretty interesting. I don't think I have the time to really look at the company as a whole in judo. But let's take a look at their fundamentals, at least. Maybe you can give me uh, a little more understanding of them. So Amcor Technology. Let's see. So first future growth. Company, not a huge hyper growth stock. 7.1%. It's not a it's not a slow grower, but it's not a hyper growth. I want I call these like that modest. 7.1 is still pretty impressive. They are profitable. They are positive in cash flow from operations. So I can see this is more of a developed company already. One that it's it already has it, it already created a name for itself. Um, next, if we take a look at financial health, financially, they have about $800 million in cash and about $1 billion in debt. Again, they're not that leveraged. They are profitable. They are positive in cash flow from operations. So it's okay for them to be leveraged, but they're not that leveraged at all. So overall, the company fundamentally looks good. It, it gives me that green flag that I can definitely continue looking more into the company. Now, let me just take a look at their stock price. How have they been doing? Um, the stock is up 1.5%. And we can see year two since February, the stock hasn't really moved much. Uh, in the past year, the stock is down about 20% from its all time highs. Um, but since February, we can see it hasn't really moved much. In the long term of things, it has definitely seen a crazy, crazy pull up. Um, Do, 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 do. So, uh, Sigurd Darson, um, uh, let me answer your question in a bit. I just want to keep looking at this company a little bit more. So they reported earnings yesterday. Was that was that the big the reason for the drop? So that's good, right? I I, I like that. I like when earnings come and the stock either pulls up or pulls up or, or pulls down. Right? It kind of gives us um a, a new baseline of, of the stock. Like, I feel after earnings happen, it eliminates a nice amount of the risk, especially when it's pulled down, because we already saw how things are guiding. We're already seeing how things are, um, are going to look in the future. So if it's pulled back a bit after earnings, um, it, it definitely eliminates a good portion of the risk. Um, anything else we should take a look at? Let me take a look at it here. Um, so this is AMKR. And let me take off Visa real quick. So even with this drop, right, even with this drop, a price to sales ratio is still um, still a bit higher than how it's been in the past year. P.E. ratio, right, still been a bit higher and EV to a beta forward is still a bit higher. So this is a stock that valuation has been um, has been a bit higher. It's a bit higher than normal. But again, that doesn't deter me from buying. It just tells me, hey, if I do decide to buy, probably buy a little bit here and there and increase your exposure over time. But overall, I'm, I'm pretty interested in this one in judo. All right, so um, Sigu Darson, I don't believe Sigu, uh, I'm pretty sure I'm butchering your names. My apologies. Um, but let's see. You're asking. You're gonna start investing in the next in the next month. Would you invest? What would you invest in if you were starting right now and wanted to be profitable in the long term of things? So my answer might be something you don't like to hear. Let's say I, I was just started to invest. I would personally invest in just the overall market, right? I would, what's going on for this morning? I would invest in something like SPY, in something like QQQ, and invest little bit by little. During this time when I'm investing in the overall market, I would continue to read, continue to see how the market reacts to certain news. Um, if you're starting off, let me just say you're going to make mistakes. It happens. Mistakes come and go. The most important thing is learning from those mistakes. Um, so for me, yeah, uh, SPY and QQQ would probably be the first ones I would invest in when I, if I was to start right now. Uh, and then from there, I would just try to learn a little bit more about how to invest in individual companies. What should I look at? What type of financial numbers should I look at? What companies do I understand? Try to learn a little bit more about yourself. Uh, and it's pretty crazy, right? I, I'm we're talking about a finance a finance plan, 
but to me i'm really talking more about understanding what you enjoy understanding uh understanding just the overall your emotions on on how you're gonna last here in the investing world um because i do think emotions take a huge huge play um single darson uh so like i said start off something simple simple like the spy then the qqq invest over time and and, and continue continue to invest I do want to say if you are here in the United States, find a broker that has free commissions. If you're outside of the United States anywhere, find a broker that has low fees or zero commissions. Also try to find a broker that has fractional shares. I think fractional shares are the greatest inventions to us retail investors, to investors who have less than, I want to say even $500,000 in their account, fractional shares is a must-have if your country allows it i know certain there's certain countries that don't have brokers with fractional shares here in the united states there are brokers with fractional shares and with um no fees so i would definitely see um if you are here in us try to find those brokers i like fidelity robin hood has i think fractional shares um if you are outside of the united states try to find one that has low fee brokers fees are going to really hurt you in the long term of things so eToro, I, I personally haven't used it. Do they have zero commissions? I, I, if they have zero commissions, yes. One thing I also would say is go to Reddit. Reddit is such a great place. And just put like Iceland, how to invest in Iceland or top brokers in Iceland. And just go on, look for it in Reddit or just on Google. Um, and it can give you a, a, a good list of brokers to, to go to. Let's, let's try to find some. Top brokers in Iceland. Brokers to choose in Iceland. I mean, eToro is here, number four. They have active traders. I mean, uh, I, I don't know. Um, I don't know any of them, so I can't give you any real answer, right? But active traders seems to have great CD, CFD fee scores. I'm guessing their fee score is what... Um, do, 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 do. So stocks, you have eToro seems to probably be one of the main ones that's being hit here. Pilot, yeah, eToro doesn't offer all the stocks. I think they only offer like the main players, especially here in the US. But I think they are expanding, Pilot Poncho. Um, so I do believe um, it's uh, it's pretty cool to, like I said, start off simple. Don't make it difficult. Uh, uh, single darson don't make it difficult at all it's keep it simple with sp i would keep it simple with spy and qqq and just learn over time pick up some books read stuff online um and the final thing i would say is just don't believe there's one method of investing investing you can do investing in so many different styles everybody here i'm pretty sure everybody in this chat group has a different investment style um, and they're all probably doing good some might do better than others um, but it's all again, all on what you enjoy too. Oh, pilot, pilot, eToro, very user friendly, easy to learn, great display. Um, and feel free, right? Uh, d join my Discord channel. I don't know, I don't have it. Uh, let me just open it up real quick. Do, 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 do. Man, I gotta put my Discord channel. Let's see. Give me one second, guys. <laughs> YouTube. Let me give you my Discord channel. Um, it should be here. Do, do, do. Discord group. So check out that Discord channel, um, Cigar Darson. And here in the channel, if you go to a channel called Resources. I have resources here and I have a lot of great information, a lot of free websites that I use to learn investing, a lot of my playlists. I kind of circled my favorite playlist to obviously of myself of in, intro to investing. Um, so definitely check out that Discord channel and join and go to the resources. Like I said, I have books here. I have websites. Most, most of them are free and I have a, a playlist of what I would recommend.
Pilot, thanks for that, Judo. Great to see how Jose tackles new company. The basic research before... Yeah. Yeah, so, Pilot, that's, that's pretty much how I do, right? Um, top five positions, NFL. NVIDIA. My, my current top five positions are NVIDIA, Unity, Serenz, C Limited, AMD, and Microsoft. Those six are, are I want to say, very close to each other. Um, those six are all above 7% of my portfolio. Um, so within those six accounts, what's that? Seven times six? I forget. 42%? So six, six, those six accounts hold about 42% of my portfolio. Did I do that right? I think so. What's going on, Jabiki? Morning. So yeah, NFL, those are my top, uh, my top six. And, and you can see, right, those six were all different. Some of them were high growth. I had Unity and C, high growth. Then I had some um, NVIDIA, AMD, not a high growth, but not a slow grower either. Then I have Microsoft, which is a mixture of like value. Um, and then Sorens, which is a very high speculative play. So it's top six positions, all within different markets, um, all different stages in business. Uh, and I'm very, very excited to own them. So if I mean, if, if anybody, I, I kind of missed some. So if you guys want me to take a look at any other stocks, feel free to let me know. I mean, we still got 20 minutes. Market just opened. So let me just take a quick look at um, how things are doing right now. So yeah, Spotify is down big. Pretty red today, actually. It's actually really red. I act <laughs> I'm not sure if I want to look at my portfolio today. Um, so right, I have Spotify down, Fastly's down, Fiverr's down, Skills is down. Um, we're, we're definitely seeing a pull, uh, a, bis, uh, a recent pull. I mean, but it's been kind of good in the past few days. The only one really driving me right now is Google. Unfortunately, AMD seems to have pulled down a bit. Um, so pilot, I do not. And let me tell you why I do not right now. It's again all depends on how your financial plan is, Pilot Poncho, right? So for me, my wife and I, we have a plan, right? We put X amount in, in stocks, we put X amount in savings account, we put X amount in like a real estate fund. So even though I am investing in stocks, I am saving money elsewhere. When we do see a crazy pull down, Pilot, and my funds are normal, instead of saving, for example, in real estate, instead of saving in savings account. I kind of just, uh, my wife and I, we kind of just put all of those together into into the um, into the stock investment. So my stock investment for um, investments weekly increases dramatically during pull downs. Uh, so that's how I play it. I know some people like to have cash at hands. Not my main move. I can see why people would do it. My main move is just since I invest weekly and I also invest in other things. When I do see a pull down. I kind of stopped saving in those and just put everything on investment. Um, and, and that's what I did a lot during the COVID, um, during the COVID crash. During the COVID crash, I, uh, what's going on, Fat Metal? I like stopped savings on savings account. I stopped saving on real estate funds. And I just started investing heavy on, on a weekly basis. But if, if one doesn't, I, I feel like if I didn't have that, annual that weekly income on um, pilot then i might have i might have a bigger position in cash fat metal i've uh spotify is one i'm doing uh earnings video uh, was it you um i don't think was it you fat metal that uh tagged me on twitter um i know someone did earlier today so uh i i, I definitely do um, and and uh, you, pilot right so that's i think that's why investing is so different for everybody yeah fat metal so you gave me that idea i'm actually doing an earnings video on spotify um that should be coming out i already got all the information after this stream i'm gonna go and record that um so around noon i'm doing spotify and and twitter and not twitter and pinterest but pilot right like i mentioned i think that's why it's important for everybody to have investing is different for everybody because everybody has a different investing financial life right like you mentioned you just immigrated so you need you probably had to have a good cash position just because there were so many unknowns 
uh, on in your life right at the moment luckily for me there's not too many unknowns um great job right uh very stable um expenses uh, it's not like i'm a crazy crazy buyer my expenses are pretty pretty set which is pretty much a mortgage and stuff like that uh so for me i i get to because of this certainty of what i have right now i probably get to be a little bit more aggressive and a little bit less in cash but outside i do have like for example a cash position that would help me if things go bad not a cash position that is meant for stocks um pilot more a cash position that is meant for everyday life it's if something dramatic happens alphabet earnings driver by earnings your opinion honestly i haven't looked at them yet um i did see youtube was doing amazing so that's great because i am a youtube content creator it means that people are still driving to this platform um it means that we're it's still a great time to start a youtube channel but alphabet earnings is one drive by that i want to take a look at that i want to do alphabet and microsoft as well hopefully i can get that on uh later today i do have i i, I do have google um in my portfolio and with this upside i'm not thinking of selling like google even if it goes up 10 percent right now whatever it goes up i have no intentions of selling google uh, or alphabet i always call it google um Rit fizz agree man super super excited about app uh, maybe not apple uh, i could care less really about apple about facebook facebook i'm pre pretty excited um nfl highlights thoughts on DraftKings. DraftKings, great uh it's on my portfolio um uh, for sure the DraftKings, what I'm really liking about them, NFL, is just everything they are coming out with, right? I've done a few videos um, on DraftKings already, but the the acquisitions that they're doing, the partnerships, right? They they just from April 27th, right? On yesterday, they were they still announced new partnerships um, with different content relations and media. My favorite thing about them right now, though, is that they're kind of entering the content creation market they they bought a company uh and now they hired their first chief media officer uh, so i want to see how that future looks for DraftKings. is right it's not just going to be a sports book it, it's somewhere that they're going to be able to bring people to their platform what else nura walt disney walt disney i do enjoy uh, let's take a look at the stock real quick for you. So so let's see. Um, boom, 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 boom. Let me just close some stuff because if not, this everything stays open. Um, I just want to look at charts again. Did anything change? Google's still up. AMD is keeping 2%. Facebook is up right now. I guess based on earnings later tonight, investors are excited. That's one thing I hate seeing though is when earnings are coming out and stock price like go up. I'd rather just have them quiet. Spotify down 10% now um, as the market opens. Like I said, I do believe some earnings are going to be giving us some great buying opportunities. DraftKings, is, I, I'm kind of... It, DraftKings has seen a crazy pull down. Um... But I think as a long term, I'm, I'm super excited. Uh, it still hasn't broken anything all out of this trend. Disney, Disney ha is quiet. When does Disney report earnings? Man, I wish Disney reported earnings May 4th, especially since they have Star Wars, right? I would, I would have enjoyed that concept of them doing earnings on May 4th. Instead, they do it May 13th. Uh, but Disney has pulled back a, a, a bit. Uh, let's take a look at Disney as a whole. Got no money, um, Fat Metal. You got no money to buy more spots, sadly. Tempted to sell some small positions to buy more spot, though. H how big is Spotify in your in your portfolio, Fat Metal? And Fat Metal, are you in the Europe side? I, I, I always forget. I feel like you might be. Um, so Disney, right? Not a slow grower. 12.8%, right? 15% is when I consider this a growth stock. 128 um they do we can see right COVID was an impact for them they took a nice hit um but they are pr overall profitable and overall positive in cash flow from operations financially 
Um, 2.3, actually, you want to increase. Fat Metal, what's your biggest position? Um, then let's take a look at cash and short-term investments. They have $17.1 billion in cash. They are a bit leveraged. They're actually a lot leveraged. Disney is one of those companies that can be leveraged like this, right? I feel probably a lot of their leverage comes from their theme parks, kind of, uh, kind of taking loans to open up all those parks. I know recently they just opened up um, the Shanghai Park. Uh, and I do believe that increases that a lot. The other thing is they've been focusing a lot on their content creation side. I'm pretty sure they're building out that. So for them to be leveraged, not the best balance sheet, but it is Disney. They are profitable. They are positive cash flow from operation. Um, so it's okay, right? Uh, now, what else do we want to take a look at Disney? I mean, Disney overall earnings, a long-term hold for me. I, I don't, I don't want to... This thing is not one I'm, I'm, I'm thinking of selling anytime soon. Um, one that I, I'll, I'll continue to hold for the long of things, like five years, 10 years from now. Mm -hmm. Drive by. Um, let's see. And, and like, if I miss something, guys, feel free to let me know. I, I, I try to grab as much as I can um, and look at most, uh, at most questions, but sometimes I, I miss some. Um, so Jibiki, do you think today is a good day to buy Sorens? Man, it's always a great day to buy Sorens. Let's see Sorens stock. I think anywhere in the nineties for me is a nice, it's to buy like a nice medium size. I would say, um, Jibiki. One thing that I do want to say though, is, um, this company relates a lot to, the way auto, auto, um, cars are moving, right? Automotive, automobiles are moving. Since we're having that chip shortage, we keep seeing that there's been like a delay in semiconduct, in, in the, there's been like closing of, of car production. Because of this closure of car production, I believe Sorens might have a weak earnings. And because of this weak earnings, the stock price might drop. So I'm already going into it knowing that already. So rents is already a big position in my portfolio. So that's why I'm not buying too heavy. If they do drop on earnings because of the semiconductor shortage right now, kind of affecting their revenue because there's less cars being produced, I think that might be a better buying opportunity. Um, if I wanted, if I didn't have so rents, I would probably be buying a little bit here and there at these levels. <laughs> B that's crazy fat metal btc is 210 percent of your stock portfolio though um pretty pretty insane it's kind of a weight there but hey it's been doing amazing so i'm pretty sure you're happy with those returns drive by i see you mentioned a health industry unfortunately that's not an industry i touch um Fresenius stock I mean, they are profitable. They have a P ratio of 16.9. They pay dividends. I'm pretty sure this is either a slow grower right now. Um, let's, I, 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 unfortunately right now, uh, drive by, I think I've hit my limit of how many real stocks I can look at within an hour. My brain starts to, starts to fog. Um, so I don't really want to look too, too much into it. I'd rather just ask, answer questions. Um, for the next 10 minutes, right? I have about 10 minutes, 10 minutes on, on the company, on, on stream before I go work on the video. So, I mean, overall, I, I can see, right? PE ratio, this is a company that's been profitable in the past five years. It hasn't really moved much. That's something I don't enjoy, right? Especially for a company that has been developed. Um, five years of you not really doing anything, not something that excites me, unless I'm probably looking for a dividend yield stock. Um, besides that, it, it's pretty, pretty boring. Drive by, agree. If it's boring, it's the most interesting. Agree, right? I think that's only on stocks that have something to prove, right? If, if they're boring, uh, if they're seeing some form of revenue growth, but there's a boring market, that's true. But if they're boring in revenue growth, if they're boring in earnings, if they're boring in the market they're in, then that's just a whole different kind of boring. So there's two types of boring. There's a boring market 
where the revenue growth and everything else or find the financials are not boring and because they are in a boring market then they uh then they kind of it gets overlooked by investors but if they're in a boring market with boring financials that's a whole different kind of boring and like i said i don't follow the financial mark the 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 health market um drive by so maybe their their market might not be boring yeah yeah fat metal right there is a good boring right so uh, uh, there is a good boring and there is a bad boring dr dominic i mean appreciate it when when you uh i appreciate the support from you guys and if you guys haven't make sure to hit the thumbs up on the stream i should have asked late earlier on um but it helps a lot with the youtube algorithm Kishmore, any thoughts on Peloton? Peloton, I do think great company, right? They have great earn, they have great revenue growth. Um, they are pro uh, positive in cash flow from operations. If the stock price is down right now because of that recent news, I think that's uh might be giving investors a buying opportunity. But I, I do want to see how their most recent earnings are. did they report earnings already? I would like to see how their earnings do. No, it seems earnings haven't come out yet. Um, I mean, I, I Peloton overall, I think it's a great, cool market. They're buying, they're doing smart acquisitions, right? They're being, they're they're moving forward with their company. They're not just a buy company anymore. They're they're kind of moving into other markets, and the acquisitions that they're making, right? They just bought Parkour, I believe, this was the company that increases their overall manufacturing here in the United States. Um, so Peloton, one that if I didn't have a position, I wanted to enter at these levels. Uh, it seems to be one that has eliminated a nice amount of the risk. At the moment, I personally am not buying though. Microsoft has a pullback. Is it a good buy or not? Kishore, I think Microsoft is one that whenever it pulls back, it gives good buying opportunities, especially after earnings. At these levels with Microsoft pullback, for me, I would buy small portions here. There it would give me a good portion, a good, a good reason to increase my exposure if I had a, um, increase my exposure, right? By by little, little. So pullback is nice, but overall, it's still up a nice amount from right. Microsoft, uh, it's down three percent, but if we take a look in the past six months, it still is a lot higher. So overall, not much of a buying opportunity, but a time to like dollar cost average if I wanted to increase exposure. Oh yeah, Jabiki, we were taking a look. Let me take a look at Seren's earnings date. May 7th. Um, but the only thing, um, um, Jibiki, I want to say is, I'm pretty sure I'm not the smartest guy in the group. So most analysts probably already thought of what I thought about, how, how um, revenue might see a decrease because of the shortage. So I wonder if the stock price depreciation right now is accounting that. And that's, I think, one of the biggest things about investing is you don't know what has already been priced in, right? The stock has is down about 28% from its um, all-time highs. So has the ship shortage already been priced in to Sorens? So even if they show bad revenues this quarter, will the stock price not move? And I think that's the, like, the biggest chances that happen when investing um so that's why i i do believe that even if if even if valuations are crazy high or if i expect bad news i still don't mind dollar cost averaging because i'm not the smartest guy in the group so i could be wrong and i'd rather have some skin in the game at least um in case i was wrong all right And like I said, I think that's the biggest thing. It's like, what has been priced in already? I mean, people could look at it and be like, yeah, the, the, the revenue drop has already been priced in. That's why the stock is down about 30%. Um, but who knows? There's always someone out there that hasn't priced that in. SNDL, what's going on, RJ Kogan? SNDL. Let's take a look at that. That sun something. Sundial growers up 5%. So this is, wow. I mean, even market cap of 
it is down about 68 percent to be honest sandow grower not a company i would ever really look at this is i look at the volatility within here rj this is more of like a trading stock or if it's not a trading stock it's more of a it's more of a long-term hold if you're really really into this market this is not a market i'm too too familiar with um but this is one that i believe is going to be very very volatile and if you have if you're not able to control your emotions in a stock like this like it did it jumped five percent today it can easily see a 10 percent drop a day as well um, so this is one that's not for the faint of heart alibaba is quite cheap considering their growth rate drive by very very true but normally drive by i mean from the few years uh i want five six years seven years um but you're swinging it for about a 40 percent gain rj nice best of luck hopefully i, I don't know if you got that 40 percent gain um you have that 40 percent gain it, but um best of luck i again i'm not a trader i'm an investor but i don't ever i think you could make so much money in this game in multiple ways i think day traders can make money i think swing traders can make money i think option traders long-term investors everybody can make money in this game the most important thing i think is you need to know your risk what is your risk tolerance how much are you leveraging all those everything all you need to know all that before becoming profitable in what you do Pilot Poncho, you underestimate yourself. This channel should have thousands watching. You deserve your own link through Motley's website. We'll bring many more followers. Hard to find you on internet. I got lucky. Hey, Pilot, it, it's eventually will happen. Um, one, one, day, uh, one day it will happen, right? I'm, I'm, like I said, I'm a long-term investor. This YouTube channel and everything else is a long-term investment too, right? I, I, I see my YouTube channel as... as as my portfolio i'm putting in the work on a daily basis and over time i know it's gonna pay off um it, it, it's gonna pay off so one day um we'll probably have those thousands watching but right now i don't mind the i don't even know how many people are watching right now maybe like 10 15 um, but i enjoy you guys and i appreciate you guys for for the support risk is wait you guys are making money hey it's been a good week i, I you should be making money too fizz <laughs> Fat metal. Yeah, you know, from time to time I hit random stocks and I, I do believe that helps out a lot. Like MongoDB, that one was a um that that, that one was a a weird uh, a random one that I found. David, 16, right? Yeah, so maybe one day it'll be an extra zero, and another day it'll be an extra double zero from there. To me, I don't mind. I enjoy talking with you guys. I enjoy the, the back and forth. Um <laughs> Yeah, it was ah, that's true, right? Spotify. Spotify was a tier one stock for me last year. I really enjoyed Spotify. All right, guys. Well, this is it. There are about four or five stocks watchers. YouTube really pushes. They seem to focus on hot stocks. Yeah, you know, one thing I, I, I do know that if I focus on those stocks, I could probably get a lot more viewers. It doesn't mean I'm not going to. Um, from time to time, I might do like an AMC video. I might do like a GMC video, but I would never do like five straight videos on them. I, I just personally can't. I, I want to learn and I don't feel uh, my overall purpose of this channel was if I was if six years ago or seven years ago when I started investing, I wanted a channel that would help me grow as an investor. So every type of time I make a video, that's the type of video I try to make something that seven year old me not seven year old seven younger year old me would have learned something from and sometimes those might be boring and not the greatest returns and viewers um but i but i enjoy the concept um so that's it guys i think i'm done for the day on streaming um but i am gonna release a few videos and like always guys when you guys see a video make sure um um make sure to just sh share a comment uh hit the thumbs up it helps so much with the youtube algorithm but take care, guys. Have a good day and um, catch you tomorrow. So tomorrow I'll be on around the same time, 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock. Um, oh, Fizz, yes, I have to hit new uh, interviews. Definitely, for sure. Um, but take care, guys.